What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash entitled parents. This story's called, I got on a bar fight when I was 17. Here's the cast. Cute guy. Entitled dad. Entitled dad's friend. Might have been a family member, but he looked nothing alike, so I assume he was just a friend. And me, a devout worshipper of Bob Ross. Backstory. I work at my dad's bar. I'm a karaoke DJ and a cook, so it's technically legal. I also live in a small town that tends to have pretty small town opinions. So I do my best to keep my bisexuality a secret because I don't imagine it would blow over well. I also have ADHD, which makes my reaction time a bit faster. The story. As I said, I work at my dad's bar. This night, it was fairly busy, but it was still manageable. Eventually, this group of five, a mom, dad, son, daughter, uncle, or friend, walks in and sits down at one of the tables. The son, cute guy, was good looking, had an amazing voice, and turned out to be a nice guy. When he walked in, I immediately noticed him and couldn't stop myself from staring at him. I did my best to do it discreetly so that nobody noticed, but it was kinda hard. Cute guy kept coming over to my little station by the bar to ask for songs for karaoke, and he'd usually stay and talk to me for a bit, which made me real happy. Eventually, he just completely took all his stuff from the table and sat at the bar by me so we could keep talking. Turned out, they had just moved into town and they had seen this place on the way in, so they decided to stop by. It also just so happened that he was gay as well. I tried to hide the amount of true joy I felt when he told me that. Everything was going great. Until his dad saw us. His dad knew he was gay and didn't approve, so he was always trying to convert him to straight. He always got really mad when he saw a cute guy talking to guys. So his dad comes up to us and I can see him trying and failing to hide his rage. Hey cute guy, what are you doing? Hey dad, this is OP. I was just talking to him about the town. Entitled Dad, through gritted teeth, says, Cute guy, we talked about this. What? Just because I'm gay, I can't have male friends? This is a rural town in the Midwest. The chances of me getting with any guys here are slim to none. I figured it was a bad time to mention I'm bisexual. Cute guy, get your stuff and go back to the table. Now! Ah! He grabs his stuff and goes back to the table. For a while after that, cute guy and I would just look at each other and smile before looking away. I thought this was the end of my interactions with these people. I couldn't have been more wrong. A couple of hours later, things had calmed down and eventually Entitled Dad came over to my station. I didn't want to deal with him, but I figured he just wanted to do karaoke and knew the only way to do so was to come talk to me. So I put on my best customer service face and voice. Hello, sir. How can I help you? Stop looking at my son. Doing my best to act like I didn't know what he was talking about. What? I'm trying to fix him and I can't have you encouraging him to be a cigarette. I'm sorry you thought I was staring at your son. I was. But I was just surveying the patrons and making sure everyone was okay. I do this quite commonly. It's a habit from being a lifeguard. I don't care what you were doing. If you look at my son again, we're going to have a problem. Before I can say anything, he walks back to his table. I'm a little upset about this because it kind of seemed like cute guy and I had some chemistry. Nonetheless, I did my best to avoid looking at him. However, later on, I had to walk past their table and cute guy had his chair back a bit too far and I asked him to scooch in so I could get past. Big mistake. What did I say to you about looking at my son? I didn't even say anything when Entitled Dad stands up and throws a left hook at me. Now, what I failed to mention is that after my last story, my dad signed me up for martial arts, ITF Taekwondo and Muay Thai. So I easily duck under the hook and then grab his hair and slam his face on the table. He's a little dizzy from the impact, so I take advantage of his dizziness by grabbing his collar and throwing him out on the sidewalk. I know this might seem like a bit too much, but my dad told me that if anyone was causing problems, I could deal with it as I see fit. And once again, I thought it was over. And once again, I was wrong. I turn back and I feel a large force hit my chest. It took me by surprise and landed me on my back. At this point, I'm angry. So I stop thinking and let my body take control. I do a kip up and see Entitled Dad's friend standing there. He looked like he had been in a fighting stance, but was now surprised by what had just happened. 
However, he recovers quickly and brings his hands back up into the sloppiest sparring stance I've ever seen. I chuckled a little because I knew this was going to be easy. Then I brought my hands up and got ready for the fight. He came at me and threw a hook at my head. I duck under the punch with ease and threw my strong elbow into his ribs as I could. There was an audible crack as at least one of his ribs definitely either broke or fractured under the force. Then I grabbed the extended forearm and twisted back and fell to the ground, bringing him down too. I wrapped my legs around his arm and put him in an armbar. He started trying to get out and I began pushing my hips up. He seems to understand his situation and gives up and just laid there. I was about to tell the bartender to call the police when an officer walks into the door. I let go of the entitled dad's friend and did a back roll off of him before getting on my knees and with my hand behind my head. Entitled dad, entitled dad's friend, and I are all sitting on the bench outside, both of them barely conscious. The officers, there were four of them, took statements from all the patrons, did their best to get statements out of entitled dad and entitled dad's friend, and took my statement last. Turns out that all of the witnesses, including the mom, daughter, and cool guy, told the same story, which matched mine to the T. So I'm released, my dad is brought outside, who was proud of me for being able to take on two fully grown men by myself, and Entitled Dad and Entitled Dad's friend are both taken into custody. We decided to not press charges because we didn't have money for a lawyer, and they seemed like they were rich enough to afford lawyers that could get them off the hook. So I was allowed to leave. I just went back to working. Cute Guy, his sister, and his mom, who was very accepting of Cute Guy's sexuality, all stayed until we closed. Epilogue. Not relevant to the story, but for anyone interested. As I was leaving, Cute Guy ran out after me. He reaches into his pockets and pulls out my wallet. Turns out, it had fallen out of my pockets when I rolled off of Entitled Dad's friend. I grabbed it, and we just kinda stared into each other's eyes for a second before he lets go, and I turn and keep walking towards my car. Hey, OP, you forgot something else too. I turn around, and as soon as I do, he grabs my face and kisses me. We just stayed there for a few seconds, lips locked, before he pulled away. My number, he said, handing me a little slip of paper with a phone number on it. Things went well after that. We dated for a few months before we broke up because we didn't like having to sneak around. But we knew if people found out, it would be really bad. But we're still really good friends. Really good friends, eh? <laughs> sure, buddy. Well, that was an interesting story. Um, bar fights are always cool to watch. And um, it's cool that martial arts training pays off. Also, don't punch teenagers at bars. It's probably not a good idea. This story's called, No, You Can't Take This Guy's New Phone. Alright, where to begin? So, I was sitting on a train, heading back home after work. It was relatively crowded and there weren't many seats available, so people who haven't met before were sitting right next to each other. Not too bad, right? Well, it takes a turn for the worse. I was about 15 minutes away from home, and there was just one more stop until I got back. I was currently sitting opposite from a middle-aged lady and her child who was peacefully tapping away on his mom's phone. A guy got onto the train and saw the empty seat next to me and asked if it was taken. I said no and he sat down next to me. He seemed really excited and was holding a bag. Turns out, a train had stopped on the track and they had to get a crane to remove it. I really didn't mind, I wasn't in a huge rush. So, the guy next to me opened his bag and revealed a brand new iPhone 11. He was grinning the entire time, and I commented saying that it was a nice phone. I thought that was the end of it. God, was I wrong. The mom looks over and sees his new phone and makes a comment like me, saying it was nice. The guy sets it up and looks at it happily and starts flicking around on it. The mom suddenly looks up and taps his shoulder. Excuse me, is that the new iPhone 11? Yep, it is. I just got it in a deal. Is there any chance I could buy it off you? The guy's face immediately falls and responds with, No, sorry, it's not for sale. Well, you got it in a deal, right? Well, yeah, but... Well, you didn't pay full price for it, so it doesn't matter as much. I'm not so sure if I want to join in, but I respond with a quiet, Well, he still paid for it. The woman sharply turns her head to me and tells me this, Did I ask you? I make a face and mutter to myself, which she sadly doesn't hear. 
I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna sell you my phone. I just got it set up. Yeah, and you can just use your old one. I've had mine for ages. Me wanting to see where this goes. If you're so keen to get a new phone, why can't you just buy one yourself? Ah, uh, you don't understand anything, do you? She responds sharply. I understand that this guy rightfully doesn't want to sell you his phone. I was in an already annoyed mood, and this lady was being loud and disturbing me and other passengers, so I was getting angry. Are you the salesperson? No, you aren't, so shut up and do whatever the hell you were doing before. The kid finally pulls himself away and says, Why are you being so loud, mommy? I am so sorry for disturbing you, honey. You continue what you were doing before. She takes her eyes off her kid and looks back at us. You have disturbed my angel, how dare you? The guy says, You were the one that started this. By now, the train had stopped at the other station for people that needed to have a smoke break. I'm not going to be taking this from you. She then proceeds to grab her son by the wrist and pull him up, grabs her bags, and storms off. As she was leaving, she shouts over her shoulder, I will be reporting this. The guy with the new phone shouts back, For what? Hurting your feelings? On the journey back, I found out the guy's name was Caleb, and he was actually a really cool person, and that me and him share the same journey back. Thanks for reading. Nobody ever understands what not for sale means. Ugh, that's so frustrating. But at least she left eventually. This story's called Entitled Mom Makes My Girlfriend Cry on Her First Week on the Job. Backstory. My girlfriend got a job scooping ice cream at an upscale soft serve ice cream parlor. The job itself was actually fairly terrible. We live in LA and the influencer culture kind of takes precedence over being kind to employees. She doesn't work there anymore. Let's just say this was the final straw. I know, one week, but legit guys, this place was a terrible place to work for less than minimum wage. Long story as to why that was actually legal. Also, to keep in format, this is told in first person, but it happens to my girlfriend who is helping me draft it out. Here's the cast. Me, my girlfriend, the narrator of this. Entitled mother, with four kids and a silent husband. Entitled dad. Not actually entitled, just there and probably doesn't want to get in the way of his wife. Nice kid. One of the five kids that is actually relevant. Story. Entitled mother enters with children all around her. Where are the vegan options? We have red velvets, almond, green tea. Are those vegan? Yes, those options are vegan. Would you like to sample flavors? I want to sample them all. I'm afraid we only permit three samples per customer, but I can sample the vegan ones for you. Which ones are vegan? Are the cones vegan? Yes, the cones are all vegan. Are you sure? Yes, ma'am. I am sure the cones are vegan. What about the cone toppings? Let me double check for you. Checks ingredient list for cone toppings. Okay, so the cone toppings are not vegan, they have chocolate on them. You said they were vegan! I am so sorry for the confusion, are there any samples you like? Entitled Mother proceeds to list six different ice cream flavors she wants. I note them down, Entitled Mother changes her order immediately. And then again, I get confused as I begin to ready the ice cream. I wanted a swirl of red velvet and brown sugar! I am so sorry! Prepares the correct ice cream. Would you like anything else, ma'am? I want a pie slice! Which one would you like? Is the apple pie vegan? Yes, the apple pie is vegan. Fine! Entitled mother snatches her purchases and storms out with her family without a single please or thank you. Minutes later, she comes back in and talks only to my coworker and demands a different pie slice. Entitled mother sends her young child in to get her a fork for her pie. He turns to me and says, The ice cream was really yummy! Thank you. The next day, my manager talks to me about how my training is not going well. <laughs> okay, um, that's a funny little story. Um, you might be thinking, well, gee, what the hell happened? Why did she cry? Well, let me tell you, in case you don't know. When you work with customers of any kind, any extended interaction with them is exponentially more grating than just, you know, doing anything else on your job. All right, and usually if you're dealing with a customer for a long time, it's because they're being difficult. So if they are being difficult and they're making you take forever and like your interactions lasting like 45 minutes now and they're being jerks, oh my, it's so bad, it's so grating. You just wanna like die. This story's called Entitled Mother Gives Us a Chair Because She Didn't Want It, 
demands it back after we fix it. This happened when I was about 12 years old, so sorry if the details are a bit blurry. One day, my mother was outside watering the garden, when a neighbor shows up dragging an office-type chair outside towards the garbage. My mother asks politely why she's throwing the chair away. The neighbor responds that it was her 15-year-old son's and that he didn't want it anymore because he just bought a better chair. My mother was always good at fixing things, so she asked if she could have it since they don't want it anymore. The neighbor responded, Well, I was about to throw it away, so sure, why not? A couple of days later, my mom had fixed it. She changed the material, the chair no longer squeaked, and overall, it looked brand new. My parents were hosting a neighborhood barbecue that day, and she invited the neighbor who gave us the chair. The neighbor went to the bathroom, and when she came back, she told my mother, Hey, I really like the work you did on the chair we gave you. <laughs> Thanks. I always love fixing old things like that. So, can we have it back? Excuse me? You heard me. Since we gave it to you, it's still ours, so when can we have it back? I don't know what your problem is. You are about to throw it out. I literally asked you and you said I could have it. Entitled Mother proceeds to practically throw a temper tantrum, loud enough for the other guests to come see what's going on. Not so Entitled Dad says, Honey, what's going on? That bench won't give me back my chair. Are you talking about that old chair you threw away a couple of weeks ago? Who cares? Let them keep it. But I want it for Jeffrey. Her son, not so entitled kid, says, Mom, I already have a nice chair at home. I really don't need this one. Then I want it for myself. My dad says, Listen, I'm sorry, entitled mother, but you're causing a scene. Either stop it or leave. The entitled mother stormed off back to her house, and we didn't hear from her for a few days. One day, she came to our house and apologized. She said she didn't know what happened to her that day and that she was sorry. She invited us to her house for dinner that day and everything was fine after that. I'm glad that the story ended the way it did. She's still a close family friend to this day. And we still laugh about what happened that day from time to time. Okay, good. I'm glad it ended with no beef left between y'all. It's really nice to see maturity between both parties. It's... Really, really nice to see when you read all the other stories and they're all like, yeah, I hate her now and she hates me. We don't talk to each other. She murdered my, my, my dog. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.